And uh, Mr. Geis, you are now recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Chairman Doyle and Chairman Pallone, Ranking Member Latta, and Nick Morris Rogers. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to testify here today. We really do appreciate it. My name is Greg Geis. I'm Director of Government Affairs at Public Knowledge. We're a public interest organization dedicated to promoting freedom of expression and open internet and access to affordable communications and creative works. As members of this committee are well aware, we are in the midst of a connectivity revolution. As more devices and services demand spectrum resources, the policy to satisfy that demand is becoming increasingly challenging. To meet that challenge, we must first use all of the tools in the toolbox to provide access. That's licensed, unlicensed, open access, sharing. Second, as this committee just recognized, we have to insist on expert coordination led by the FCC and NTIA. And third, we need to emphasize the public interest first and foremost in our spectrum policy. Supporting those structural components will allow policymakers to address the spectrum needs, to secure opportunities for all Americans, and to maintain our collective uh, global competitiveness. As R Ranking Member McMorris Rogers just noted, demand for connected devices and tax efforts to meet that demand means that there are few greenfield opportunities remaining. Everyone has to work to enhance efficient use of spectrum, and policymakers will need to focus on issues such as spectrum utilization by incumbents and tightening of technical parameters, including receivers. In addition, we need to use all the tools in the toolbox when it comes to access. Back in 2009 and 2010, when I was honored to serve as counsel on this committee under then Chairman Waxman, he, Representative Doyle, Representative Eshoo, and a number of other folks on this committee made the case that we do not need to frame our spectrum policy in terms of a fight between licensed and unlicensed. Rather, they were calling then for what we now know as the sounder framing, a mix of access regimes that promote spectrum efficiency and a healthy, vibrant wireless sector. An example of that, an example that brings that into focus is the FCC CBRS proceeding. There, the FCC, through great coordination, chose a three-tiered access regime that brought, that balanced the needs of protecting ongoing incumbent use while creating opportunities for commercial licensed services as well as open access spectrum use. They did it all without interference. CBRS and other successful sharing efforts show that policymakers, when they do focus, should focus on uh, remaining open to the idea of exploring the full suite of access regimes when considering any spectrum band. As members of this committee, you're also well aware of the importance of spectrum coordination and interagency process. As Chairman Doyle and Ranking Member, member Latta wrote in their op-ed last week, it is essential that the interagency coordination process be followed and uh, that it be made clear NTIA is the agency to hear concerns of federal agencies and the, and the agency that is meant to address those concerns. We're also encouraged, as was just recognized, that the FCC and NTIA are working on uh, their uh, spectrum coordination update. They've reestablished high-level meetings. They're updating the Memorandum on Understanding, promoting evidence-based spectrum compatibility analysis, and developing a nation, national spectrum policy. All of this is critical to restoring our interagency process. As this committee and the FCC explores new spectrum opportunities, we must ensure that every allocation serves the public interest, convenience, and necessity. This means more than simply making spectrum available for new, new services. It, ensure, it includes ensuring that members of our society, all members, including rural communities, low-income communities, and communities of color, enjoy the benefits of these spectrum technologies, both as consumers and as creators and innovators. Simply put, spectrum policy should serve the public interest as Congress has directed. I wanted to spend some time this morning discussing access regimes, interagency coordination, and the need to focus on public interest because those elements are key to the next phase of exploring the wireless frontier. In my written testimony, I go over five uh, opportunities uh, in detail but just to briefly mention them here in closing so that I don't fall through the trap, uh, to advance the public interest need, Congress should renew the FCC's auction authority and should support public interest needs with those auction revenues. 
The committee should consider how auction revenues could advance public interest objectives, such as digital equity, something Chairman Pallone just recognized, and that public knowledge and other uh, public interest groups have joined in coalition to support as part of our Airwaves for Equity campaign. And that doesn't mean NG911, a dedicated wireless fund and other public interest needs can't be satisfied as well. To promote sharing opportunities, the committee should look at the lower three gigahertz band. The Spectrum Innovation Act is a great opportunity to do that work, and we look forward to working with you as that moves forward in this committee. We also hope this committee will encourage the FCC to think about opening up the 12 gigahertz uh, band for a variety of uses uh, that protect the incumbent satellite opportunities, but also allow for a greater mixed use of that band so that we can fully utilize it. And finally, I think this committee can support uh, sensing technologies and advances in incumbent informing capabilities that promote sharing as well. Uh, thank you for your consideration. I'm pleased to answer any questions. Sorry to go over time.